All right, welcome back. After a couple of weeks off, the R for Data Science book club is back up and operating. And today we are looking at the chapter 11 on data import. Now, the big thing about data import, you've probably already played with this if you've done anything with your data before. But basically, you're going to be able, to, you're going to have to read your own data in if you want to be able to do anything with it. And chances are, if you've toyed with data before that you needed to put in manually, then you've probably used the read CSV function. And you'll notice here that we're using the read underscore CSV, which is part of the tidyverse. There are also, there's also read dot CSV that comes, I believe, with base R. But as far as putting things into the tidyverse friendly format, we want to use read underscore CSV if you have a comma separated file. Um, there's other options if that's not what you have. For, first off, read underscore CSV2 is if you're doing with, if you're dealing with non-US styles of numbers. So you know how we, we use periods in the US for decimals, they use commas and just some other things. Um, if you have somebody who basically like copy and pasted you something out of Excel, a lot of times read TSV can take care of that for you because it's reading the tabs in as your delimiter instead of commas. And then if somebody just gave you something with a completely wonky delimiter, you can declare your own special kind of delimiter to separate your um, variables with read underscore delim. And there's a way to tell it what you want to be the delimiter. So I put together a tiny little example database or tiny tibble for us to use in these exercises to give you an idea of how the import of C read CSV works. So first up here, you see that we have created, that I created a trucks database and I put it, or I created a trucks CSV file and put it into my, R, I put it into my R workstation. And here's what it did for me. It told me, okay, well, here's the columns that I see, make, looks like it's a column full of care a column of character values model looks like it's characters as well gear looks like doubles and color looks like characters as well and you get an idea and i just printed out trucks here so you got an idea of what i actually put in there and as you see we covered this last time around with tibble when you print out a tibble it shows you what it guessed as the character so we see here that it pretty much got them right if, if I wanted to, it would, we could get like another one that, you know, if we wanted to, which ones come with a manual or option as well as an automatic option, we could have done something like paddle shifter for the column and then true or false, whether or not it has the manual option. So that will take care of things most of the time, but also, there's plenty of situations in which your file is just not getting straight to the, it's just not getting straight to the data. And there's a few other things that are in the file before we actually get to the relevant data. So that's where these functions, these parts of the read CSV function come in. We have skip equals and comment equals. So you see here in the first example, the first line of this is just metadata as well as the second line. And so here in the last, so here in the last line of that, we are getting a skip equals two, which tells it to go ahead and ignore those first two lines of the, hey there. And then on the second one, on the second example here, we said that, you know, we're telling it comment equals. So that's going to tell read CSV that if you see a line that starts with this character, then go ahead and treat that as a comment. And I don't want it to show up when I'm doing, when I'm, when you pull 
the actual data because it's not part of the data. And then you see the output from that. And then of course, there's sometimes you just don't even bother to have col column names in your file and you just jump straight at it. And there in read CSV, there is a um, argument called call names, which you can set to false and it will just give you automatic column names of X1, X2, X3, but it'll work like it's supposed to otherwise. And there's even an option for you to create your own column names within the read CSV argument. You just, instead of call names equals false, you make it call names equals, and then you present a vector of what you want your column names to be. And I just made a quick note here that the slash n construct that you're seeing in some of these is a way for you to tell R that you want to create a new line when you're in the middle of a text string. One of the other things you might run into is that we have times where we need to code in whatever our NA is supposed to be, because maybe the person who was entering the data didn't follow whatever would be a normal construct. So maybe they put like in, for, in this first example, maybe they put a period in whenever they meant for it to be an NA. So we have the argument NA equals, and then we can add whatever we want to as a string and say, okay, if you see this in one of the observations, then that is supposed to be my NA. And then there's also a situation where if you need, for some reason, need to change what counts as the quote marks, for example, if somebody used single quotes instead of double quotes, there is a quote equals as well. Um, that one can be a that one can be a little tricky to see, but basically we put double put the single quote inside of double quotes because it was single quotes that was being used around A B in the second example. All right, so the secret sauce behind the read R package, which does all of our read CSV work, is the ability to read your data by using a bunch of parse and then insert type of data here functions. So we see with strings, or actually this is, sorry, this is a logical because it's true and false. So basically it's showing you that first one is true, second one is false, and the third one is an A, it's all working pretty well. And then the next one, we see it reading in integers. Then after that, we're seeing it read in date formats, which we'll get a little bit more into proper work with data formats in chapter 16. There's actually a full package of the tidyverse that helps with that. And then there's also parse integer down here at the bottom. And you can see where somebody tried to enter a period and instead showed up as an NA because we had again declared NA as a period or a period to stand for NA. However, not everything is going to work perfectly. And when that happens, it's good to have an idea what the errors look like. So in this first example, we told R to parse the parse integers. And the second and the third and fourth examples are not actually integers. One is a string and the next one is a decimal or it would have been called a double. So you see from our warnings below that, that it says, you know, on row three, I expected an integer and I got ABC. And then it says on row four, I expected no trailing characters and I got a 0.45 in this. And so when we try to print out that um, tibble, we get for three and four, well, we get first our new problem. And then we get for three, we get NA because it expected an integer and got ABC. And then for four, we get NA because it expected no trailing characters and got 0.45. And if there's ever a ton of problems to the point where they can't all show up in your um, console, there's the problems function that you can have it give you a look at everything. And this is just a taste of a good number of the parsers that you'll see that are used just in read R. Pretty much there's a lot of them to go into and we're not going to do it here, but you can definitely look back at the chapter for whatever you need for your specific for the specific need you have at a specific time. And it's probably not helpful to run through them all and just bog things up here anyway. So let's 
give a look into how ReadR works. Have you ever wondered how it, you know, comes up with, at least most of the time, the correct type of column that it's supposed to be? Well, what it's doing is it's looking at the first thousand entries in each one of your variables. And from there, it's trying to make the best possible guess that it can at what your column is actually about. So if it sees nothing but integers, it's going to say, okay, well, this is an integer column. If it sees strings, it's going to say, okay, well, this is a column of strings. If it sees nothing but true, false, true, false, true, false, in a true, false, true, false, it's going to say that it's logical. However, that doesn't always work out perfectly. So the first set of entries isn't typical to the column as a whole, it may guess incorrectly. So if you have nothing but NAs for your first thousand entries, it's by default, there's actually in the chapter somewhere kind of the hierarchy of what it goes through when it's guessing. And the first one is logical. So if it has nothing but NAs in the first thousand entries, it's going to see all those NAs and that actually by technical rule suits a um, logical vector or suits what counts as logical because nothing is counting as absolutely incorrect. And so it's gonna guess logical. But again, if you're running into problems, problems with all of your columns, just use that problems call to get a look at everything that's going wrong. And from there, it's best to go column by column trying to solve your issues. That way you can kind of, you know, not have to run around back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You can go, okay, well, I need to do it for this column. And then you have the idea, okay, I'll move on to the next one after that. And then once you figure out what type of data the column should be read in as, you can tell R to read it that way using the call underscore and then whatever type arguments. So you see down here in this example, we wanted it to call in X as call underscore double. Actually, let's look at this fully. So we had read CSV and then we basically we put in what, what we want the file that it's reading in. And then the next argument was call types equals and then it gave calls and then it started a new set of parentheses and we put X equals call double. So that would be column X equals a column full of doubles, which is a type of number. And then Y equals a column full of logicals. So there's a few other ways to, that you can troubleshoot in here. And one of them that's suggested in the book is to just increase that number of observations that RADAR is looking at it when it tries to guess what your column is. So maybe there's finally something other than an NA in the thousand and first column. So you need to make it guess max equals a thousand and one. Or maybe, maybe you just need, if you have the time, you can make it guess max equals 10,000 and it can guess from the first 10,000 entries. And the nuclear option is to just read everything in as characters. I know I've had to do this plenty of times. Um, and actually, after you do that, you can then use type convert to try to put everything back the way it is. And there's more details on that within the chapter as well. But if you need to just call everything in as call character, you can see that the argument is read CSV, tell it the file that it's reading in, then call types equals calls, and then doing dot default equals call character. And here, once you're done doing all of your analysis, at some point you're going to want to write the file back so you can get it out of R. And that is where the write CSV comes in. And you'll see in here our first argument that we're giving it is the data frame or the tibble that we're wanting to write to a file. And then the second argument, which is inside of quotation marks, is what we're going to name the file. And that is how you get your CSV back out. There's also a package, there's, al there's also an ar argument if you're using, if you know you're gonna jump it into Excel next that's called write Excel CSV. And it plays a bit more nice with Excel than your typical CSV. But there's also a read Excel package out there on CRAN. It takes a little bit of time to wrestle around with to get things the way you want, but I know I've used it a handful of times and if it's something that you're doing every day, I would argue it's worth going and learning enough about the read Excel package to go ahead and figure out how it works to make your day a little bit easier. And that's what we have for import.